Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Photographer's Journey, a podcast for the photography community. I'm your host, Lucas Dreiger, and I'm also the CEO and co-founder of Format. On this podcast, I'll be interviewing a diverse range of successful photographers from around the globe about their journeys as artists and entrepreneurs. We'll talk about their stories, their work, their inspiration, and how they have grown their businesses. Welcome to episode one of The Photographer's Journey. This is our first episode in season one called Photographers, COVID, and the Future. I'm talking to photographers about their photography journey, how COVID has impacted their professional lives and their outlook for the future. I hope that the stories we share with you will be a source of inspiration for you as you continue on your own journey through the pandemic and beyond. It's my pleasure to welcome our first guest, Jerry Kingsley. So Jerry is an international published portrait photographer and a cinematographer born and raised in Northern Ontario, Canada. He's known for his portraits of actors, authors, public and corporate figures. As a cinematographer, he has recently completed principal photography on the feature film Swan Song and is currently prepping work for the upcoming feature film Fidelity, which combines both live action and animation. Can you just give us a short rundown how you became a photographer? Yeah, sure. And uh, well, I, I, like uh, growing up in Northern Ontario, it was uh, at the time, like in the 80s and 90s, it was pretty rural. And uh, I was a little bit north of Sudbury in uh, a town called Hanmer. And uh, I was always kind of an art kid. I was always drawing pictures and, uh, you know, sketching and everything. And uh, uh, growing up, I was always, you know, doing that in class. And I was always doodling and, and, and worrying about that stuff more than anything else. And uh you know, it just kind of progressed over time. The problem that I always had up here, though, is that art was always kind of discouraged for a lot of kids in terms of it was like a fun thing to do. And, oh, you know, entertain yourself, go color. But it was never like, oh, you're going to be a career artist. It was never re really a realistic thing for someone living so far up here. Typically, mm. you work a government job or a school job or, you know, go work in the mines until you retire type of thing. That's kind of like the old old school mentality. And uh, so over time, I kind of just, uh, you know, was interested in various things. And uh, it wasn't until my dad, uh, he, he was working as a salesman for a company and they gave him uh, a Polaroid camera and this gray kind of blocky looking ugly, ugliest camera you can think of, you know, the kind of like 90s style. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know what this thing was. And then he was showing, showing it to me and he had to take these pictures of his like sales displays and send it back to his uh, corporate head office. But I would always end up stealing these, this camera and I would take uh, pictures with it all the time when I would arrange my little action figures and toys and kind of and just <laughs> into that. And I used to do that all the time and create all these little kind of fantastical worlds. And it was really fun. And uh, it wasn't until about, uh, uh, grade six where I actually had a teacher, you know, actually give you some really positive encouragement to say, mm. you know what, you know, I don't care what you do, just make sure you do something in the art world. Mm. And then as you got into high school and that really, it became more discouraging in that, you know, how do you make a, you know, ends meet as an artist and stuff like that. It was, there's really no pathway up here to really, to really do it successfully. So you really had to go to somewhere like Toronto or a bigger center to really kind of compete at mm. any level to have a career in it. Um, so I ended up, uh, you know, going, getting into IT and I like kind of the web design, graphic design type stuff. And I spent a lot of time in digital art and, you know, growing up in the nineties and that I started building computers, you know, like 200 megahertz processors with EDO memory, you know, and I'd go to yard sales and build all this stuff. And I really got into computer, computer technology and information technology. And uh, that built up my first kind of career. And I spent about 10 years working at that professionally. And I was a computer technician and uh, uh, working on uh, IBM systems and HP systems all across Northern Ontario. And uh, in 2008, there was that major financial crisis and the company I was working for was a national IT company and they kind of mm. went completely out of business. And uh, that I was at a pivotal moment there where I was able to really kind of stop and think and be like, okay, well, I was still kind of doing photography as kind of a as a hobby with some friends. And I thought, well, since I really have you know, an opportunity here, a window to go into a new direction. I'll just, I'll just take it and see what happens. And there wasn't a lot of people kind of doing it at the time. A lot of the older, older guard photographers were kind of at their, their tail end of their careers. So I, 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 I thought to myself, uh, you know, you know, uh, I'll get an odd job for now. And then I'll just kind of build up that, uh, that profession until, until something happens and just kind of see, see what happens. Right. And mm. kind of go on that, on that journey and just kind of have low expectations mm. uh, for everything and just kind of follow it. So uh, from there, I kind of just kind of built it up and built it up. Hmm. Awesome. And so yeah. there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, there's, I think there's a large gap between you, you know, taking the leap and saying, you know, I'm going to try this, you know, no major expectations. I'm going to try this as I go. And then landing kind of your first gig where, you know, you start to feel, Hey, you know, maybe I made it. Maybe this is, yeah. the, maybe this is the validation moment. Do yeah. you remember what, uh, what was the kind of the pivotal steps from getting, from, you know, A, I'm trying this, I'm getting into it too. I made it. 
Uh, well, you know, sometimes I still feel like that today, to be honest, you know, you never kind of really lose that feeling, mm -hmm. but I noticed, but I knew, I knew really I was on the right, uh, on the right track when I was showing up for photo shoots and I wasn't really worrying too much about all this minor details. I would just kind of show up and do my thing and just do the shoot. When, once that happened, I was like, Hey, I wasn't really messing around with my lights this time. I wasn't really mm -hmm. kind of finicking with the camera and stuff. And I just kind of went in, flowed, everything kind of worked. And I was like, huh, mm -hmm. I didn't have to put any additional thought in all the, Hmm. Uh, and all the anxieties and self-consciousness that would normally come with them, you know, somebody early in their career. So uh, I don't know if there was necessarily kind of like a moment, but I find still today though, uh, you know, I've been doing this for probably just like over 10 years now. And I still have days where I'm, you know, you're, you're, uh, you kind of have that imposter syndrome where you're like, Oh, it's yeah. terrible. And, you know, sure. even though people tell you it's, it's, it's great. You still in, inside as an artist, you're screaming inside being like, I should have done this. I should have done that. Yeah. So that's just kind of like the curse of being a perfectionist and being uh, <laughs> hypercritical of yourself. Yeah, I think that from, from what I know, that never goes away, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you know what? A really good book that I read was uh, Joe McNally's Hot Shoe Diaries. Mm -hmm. And even just reading Joe McNally, he was an inspiration of mine for years. And uh, and uh, I watched a lot of his interviews early on. And uh, he was even saying, too, when, when he was uh, doing photo shoots, even like, you know, after like 30 years, he would still kind of have butterflies sometimes where he would go and, and work with certain uh, certain people or, or a, big, uh, a big set or something. And he would just be like, well, I don't know how this turned out, but... You know, so so it was really it was really a, a you know a good thing for me to read and hear, knowing yeah. that you know the people that I you know aspired at the top levels still have these same exact uh, apprehensions uh, yeah. apprehensions that uh, that everybody does, you know. And you know, photography is a pretty wide, um, you know. There's lots of different kind of segments of photography, right? Landscape, portrait. How did you know that what you're doing today is what you wanted to do? Like, how did well, you actually gravitate towards this part of photography? Yeah, well, by doing it, by figuring out what I hated and what I didn't <laughs> like doing, you know what I mean? So when he first started, the first thing that I really enjoyed doing was uh, going out uh, and doing star trails. I had a few buddies. We used to go until all hours of the night and do single mm. exposure star trails and we'd have fun. And uh, but when I started getting approached and people were saying, hey, well, you know, uh, I guess a, a standard way of getting into photography is uh, for a, a, probably most people uh uh, are, are, are familiar with is uh, friends and family saying, Hey, you take good pictures. Let me pay for them. And we'll start with family photos and stuff. So a similar, similar story to that. I started, you know, I had a, you know, I had a cousin of mine, I shot her wedding and then I had other people that asked me to shoot their wedding. And I did that for, for three years. And I was basically doing the whole wedding and family thing. And uh, I quickly learned that just based on my temperament and the type of projects that I wanted, that this was not kind of my thing. Mm. Um, you know, you, you really have to, you know, so it was, it was through that experimentation, that trial and error, really figuring out what I enjoy doing and what I didn't enjoy doing. You know, being a, a guest at a wedding every weekend wasn't really appealing to me. So <laughs> shooting a wedding every week and working one every weekend, you know, wasn't really, you know, uh, the most appealing thing. So after doing that for a few years, I was like, ah, you know, it's okay, but I don't think it's for me. Um, and do you remember how you actually, what was, yeah, how you got your foot in the door into, you know, shooting personalities at, at film sets? What was the first kind of gig there? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was really kind of weird because it sort of just happened. I, uh, I opened a small little portrait studio and I was just doing this, this kind of dramatic, more creative portraiture. And, uh, you know, I caught the eye of a, of a local director and mm -hmm. a couple of producers and they approached me and they said, Hey, you know, we need, uh, uh we, we need some, some photos done here. Can you, can you, can you do this for us? And it was basically just something simple as that. They liked my style. And then, uh, I got mm -hmm. the one gig and it led into, you know, into one, into another, into another, um, shortly after that, I, uh, I got picked up a was teaching photography at the local college and then the university's film program ended up uh, hiring me there to teach the photography pr uh, mm. class as part of their motion picture arts program. Yeah. And uh, that kind of really got me connected with a lot more people in the film industry as well. And then it kind of just grew and grew and uh, grew from there. Hmm. Well, they say that, you know, people recognize good artists. So it looks like it was meant to be someone walked into your shop and actually saw great work and they wanted to work with you. So congratulations. That's, that's a pretty great story. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, you're, you, you recognize as a photographer and a cinematographer, uh, it sounds like that's something that potentially is a transition for you. Are you looking to transition all the way to cinematography away from photography, or is that something that you want to kind of continue, uh, doing both, both at the same time? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I absolutely love photography and I love doing what I do, especially with the photo shoots that, I, that I've done. But I mean, you also have to understand the markets that you're, that you're realistic, realistically in. Yeah. And I do this as a full time career. I don't have any other side gigs or, or, or anything else. Um, so I, I, I'm either doing what I do, teaching what I do or a combination of, of all of the above. 
And uh, ideally, uh, my my uh, you know my happy place would probably be being able to do the photography and and a feature film, all mm -hmm. kind of managing that entire project, all in kind of under one house, you know. So I get to do the photo shoots that I want to do. Mm -hmm. I get to shoot the you know the films that I want to do, and I can kind of do the whole package in one. I think mm -hmm. that would probably be like you know the best uh, you know the best uh, case scenario if I had a choice. And from a kind of comfort perspective, where are you with cinematography right now? Is that something that you just started recently, or are you kind of full into it and you do it very often? Well, so right now it's, uh, it's, it's scaled up, uh, you know, tenfold in the last two years. It was kind of like leading that way. But the, but the idea was uh, three years ago, I did my first short film and even, and, uh, and then, you know, I'm working with this one director now, BP Paquette. He's, uh, he's, uh, he does some really interesting kind of art stuff. And uh, he was looking for somebody to do really, you know, interesting experimental techniques with, you know, you know, optical illusions and various set buildings and stuff. And uh, he approached me and he asked me to do this. Uh, to, to, to shoot his movies for him. So, uh, you know, uh, my goal now, basically, I think I would, I would say is uh, to build, to continue building my photography uh, portrait side of the business, to have that kind of maintaining itself, but to also take on like one, you know, feature film per year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that way there, you kind of have the one project when you're in your production time, and then the rest of the time you can kind of fill it and then just, you know, do photography stuff. And, and the best thing for me would be, having the ability to not be uh, dependent on trying to chase after clients, but more yeah. so just picking and choosing the clients that you want to work with. I think that's kind of the best case scenario to be in. That's great. Um, there's a lot of learning lessons there. I'm just wondering if there's anything that you would tell yourself, you know, don't focus on this or focus on that, or, you know, get into the door here early. Don't wait until, you know, this moment. Uh, is there anything like that that you've realized after going through this process that you'd have you would have done differently to, to do it all faster and, and better? Uh, yeah, I think one of the main things just thinking about it right now is probably just, uh, you know, don't necessarily care, put too much stock into what everybody else thinks, you know, don't worry about what, you know, what, what other people are doing and really just kind of focus on, on yourself and, you know, compete with yourself and mm -hmm. make sure that you're on that path. I find it's really easy. Uh, it's easy to kind of get lost in, in the weeds and kind of get sucked into, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some of these social platforms. And then you spend your whole day, you know, on there rather than really working on your craft. And, uh, and it, and, you know, I understand why, I mean, we're kind of fed a narrative that we, you have to have these presences, you have to constantly be tweaking your algorithms and doing all this hashtagging yes. and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's a great compliment to, to your, to your system, but if that's your all day and all be all to me, I'm that this, it's, it's, to me, I don't think that's sustainable because how much time do you actually have to really get better at your craft to, to, you know, have more meaningful conversations with your yeah. clientele. I come more of the, uh, the traditional way of, uh, you know, meeting people face to face, you know, going to meetings and, you know, uh, yeah. working based off referrals, not necessarily just mm. throwing a bunch of money at a, at a tech giant and hopefully they, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they'll, they'll ingratiate me in the popular <laughs> streams, you know, or whatever, it, whatever it is. And have you ever actually gotten a job through the tech giants, the Instagrams and social media? Was there ever an opportunity that came through that, those channels? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are, but I find like most of the, most of my major clients do not, uh, don't come from those, right. uh, those areas. Like they're not right. the demographics, like some right. of the portrait stuff I'll totally get through Instagram like, Hey, I like your work and I want to work with you. Cool. Uh, and they'll do some like, you know, right. basic portrait packages, but for any, I, I find for any really serious, large, uh, large contract or large project has never originated from, from a social yeah. media platform. Yeah. It's always been through just, you know, you know, referrals, working with other clients that were associated with them and just doing good, reliable work that people can say, Hey, you're dependable. You're, you're, you do quality stuff and we can rely on you. That's always been, you know, the most important thing. The hustle. That, yeah. that, that is a good segue to my next question. So at format, you know, we've always realized that and, and, and recognized this early on that the photography journey has two paths, right? There's the artistic journey, you know, becoming a really good artist, composition, color, you know, art theory, et cetera. Yeah. And the entrepreneurial journey, the business side, the referrals, talking to clients, client relations, Looking back at your personal journey as a photographer and both of those kind of pillars, art and entrepreneur, uh, how would you, uh, how did you approach both at the same time? And how do you think you did on both? Do you, do you think you're better at one than the other? Did you spend as much time on both being an entrepreneur? Because you are in some way an entrepreneur and, and an yeah. artist. 
Yeah. Uh, for me, for me, it's pretty funny. It's, uh, it's like, I'm definitely not a business person. I don't have a business mindset. So I have people that can kind of help me with that when I need it. For me, it was always more of the art side of things. And uh, probably one of my biggest failings was just being very poor at business uh, starting up. And uh, it's so overwhelming that even if you read all the business 101 books, you know, it really took me several years to really figure stuff out really how to, how to manage everything as a business because as an artist it's like you don't think about these things you're just thinking about you know the scene the emotion what you're trying to convey in your in your work and uh, a lot of times the business side it's there but you kind of you forget about it and uh, and then it creeps up on you and then all of a sudden it's like you got to do your taxes or you got to you know, set something up and you're like oh wait I should have this all organized already <laughs> but it took me about you know get two to three years initially to really kind of get myself uh, into a workflow that was you know, I kind of like a one stop that this is simple and, you know, I can kind of do this and, and maintain it and have a nice little, little, uh, little humming business. And I don't have to really th think too much about it. For me, it was just keeping the business side simple because it was the most confusing thing for me. Yeah. Um, like my recommendation for people starting out that are having this, uh, this difficulty is just, yeah, go on even YouTube and watch some business one-on-one stuff, you know, basic stuff, you know, how to manage your clientele, how to manage your contacts, mm -hmm. how to do invoicing properly. And, and those little things are, is, is, uh, I find really helpful. Yeah. You know, staying organized, simplifying your life, right. That must go a long way and allows you to focus on your art a lot more than, than you normally would. Right. And Oh yeah. Like now, right. now that I have all everything kind of in a, in a workflow, I have more time to spend on the actual things that are more meaningful, like the actual craft and practicing the work. Are there any other tips that you would give yourself? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself, especially with equipment wise. I found that uh, there was a quote, I forget where I found this quote was, uh, you know, if you want to be a good photographer, stand in front of, in front of in interesting things. Mm -hmm. And it's, I really, I really thought about that because, you know, I uh, actually, another, another story uh, I was, uh, I was working on a, a film, new romantic and it was starring Jessica Barden. And uh, one of my, one of my uh, most famous photos of her is a portrait. And I, and I, and, uh, I had her in studio and she was eating, uh, you know, we were having lunch and it was in between the, the big shoots and she was just, I don't know, we were just having fun. And uh, I said, Hey, well, let's just go do some, some photos right against the white wall and just kind of do something similar to the photo that you saw of, uh, of Robbie Mel, just on white kind of nice black and white kind of uh, striking image. And she's wearing a sweater and we're just doing uh, this, fo the, this photos. And uh, it was like with an old uh, Panasonic GF1, like 10 year old, <laughs> little tiny little micro four thirds camera that I just had kicking around. And uh, if you, if you actually look at the images and you compare it to like, you know, what I normally use like a D850, there's almost like when you're looking at it online or something like that, there's almost no difference in terms of quality. Right. So really I'm looking at these two images and I'm like, it's not about the camera. It's about the image itself. It's about yeah. the subject. It's about all these things. And uh, the camera is just a tool to get the job done. And if you're, you know, if you're a good work, you know, if you have a good craftsman, if you're, or if you're a good craftsman, you should be able to create a solid image with any tool that you have, you know, and, uh, but all that to say the whole uh, meaning in terms of saying in front of interesting things, it's like, yeah, you can have the most technically perfect image and, you know, it's, it, but it's of something that's uninteresting while well, it's not going to be, no one's, no one's going to care how good technically the quality is, right? Yeah. So you really have to kind of stand out and stand in front of interesting things. That's why it's most important is to get out there and, and actually do stuff. Yeah. You know, that's how you create the images and that's how you get the, uh, you know, get the visuals that you want. No, that's, that's good advice. Tell me a little bit about your work. Uh, so I'm looking at your website, jerrykingsley.com. I believe it's a format website and I'm looking at your personalities work. Uh, tell me a little bit about kind of the section, what you're trying to capture through your personalities work and, and how this work is usually um, shot. Yeah, so the personality section is is mostly comprised of a lot of the gallery uh, photography that I do. So usually for a feature film, it'll it'll uh, there'll be two different versions that I do usually do a setup more of an editorial style for the uh, for the EPK, so they can use it for you know for magazines or you know however the distribution companies want to use it. A lot of times I have no idea how they use the images. I just make the images and they do with them as they please, mm. you know. But uh, for me, I liked for me like my goal with my personalities is like in my time doing these photo shoots for these companies is that I'm able to actually get some really uh really good portraits of these mm -hmm. individuals because they are individuals that are not that are are not only recognizable but they're coming to northern ontario and they're actually doing things in northern ontario that you know is really not being captured and we do a lot of good stuff up here and there's a lot of creativity in northern ontario and it's like you know part of what i want to do is like build this library of uh, of stuff that's actually happening the people the who's and what's that are coming up here uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times we kind of get forgotten about in in Sudbury especially we're kind of like the little brother of Toronto and sure. you know, people kind of forget about us but uh, there is a lot of awesome creativity up here and there is a lot of stuff that's, that's happening and you know I want to be able to capture all these things and all these people that are coming here doing great things 
Yeah, I'm. I'm a really, you know, as I'm looking, as I look through your work, um, you know, before this uh, recording, uh, I'm. I, I really love it. I, I think that some of the the images, the, the specific aesthetic and the mood, is is like some of them are really unique and uh, and really kind of really interesting to look at. Um, I should I should really <laughs> think of a better choice of words here? But is there an, <laughs> is there an aesthetic or uh, I don't want to say style, but aesthetic that you try to go after. And I'm more specifically talking about the non-black and white shots. So the colored shots, the ones that are a little bit darker in the mood. Yeah, it's uh, like my, I drew uh, my initial inspirations when I was, uh, when I really knew that I wanted to kind of go after, you know, a, a market like this and in, in the kind of commercial marketing advertising and the film industry. Uh, the, the two biggest inspirations for me early on were, uh, were Annie Leibovitz and, mm. uh, uh, and uh, Yusuf Karsh. Yusuf Karsh is a, uh, is a Canadian, uh, photographer. I don't know. A lot of people don't really know him, but his work is like phenomenal. I have one of his mm. books here and he's shot like, he's shot everybody like, you know, King James and, you know, mm. Queen Elizabeth when they were young and when they were old, it's like anybody, you know, John F. Kennedy and everything. So his portfolio is just absolutely mm. just kind of bananas when I look, when I leaf through this. And uh, I was just always inspired by his work and how they were just emotive. They were just simple. They were dramatic. They were just striking portraits of really interesting people. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes, like Yvette, he has a really good shot of Picasso and he's just there with one of his uh, works of art. And it's just kind of like, it's black and white, but it's moody. There's, you know, not much going on in the background, but just nice light. And it's just hmm. always an inspiration. Another photographer was Platon. Um, he's based out of New York. He has like a really striking uh, uh, black and white uh, aesthetic which, with really wide angle lenses close up and just kind of a little bit dis, uh, mm. dis, uh, kind of uh, creates like a uh, an effect on uh, uh, on people's proportions, I would say, you know, yeah. so he kind of gets in these weird angles, gets really close up. And I really enjoyed that stuff. And it's like, for me, it's just, it's just, uh, you're never going to reinvent the wheel. And uh, part of why I study more art fundamentals is really just to kind of get myself, uh, you know, better as an artist so that I'm using, I'm not necessarily, uh, you know, I'm not trying to copy anybody or try to emulate anybody. It's like, I take inspiration from places, but ultimately one of my main pathways and my main goals is to mm -hmm. try to try to use this and find my own style. And hopefully it's unique and hopefully people will recognize it at that as, as that. No, it's, it's, it's really, it's, I, I think it's unique, you know, as a photographer, I'm sure you're facing challenges, different challenges every, every time you want to shoot. Uh, and I believe there's an interesting story with your, uh, one of your shots related to the Resident Evil movie. So I do a lot of these, uh, these gallery shoots for, for these big feature films. So Resident Evil was one to note where it just, it just wrapped not too long ago and they filmed half of it in Hamilton, half of it in uh, Northern Ontario and Sudbury here. And uh, initially I was supposed to uh, do all the gallery as, as per usual, um, but because of the COVID restrictions and everything, it was really, really tight and it was really difficult. To, it, was, it was the first time that there was a big production of this size while we were, were, I think we were in between lockdowns. Like we're currently under lockdown now and we're going into it for another 28 days apparently. So, you know, might be breaking a little bit of news here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, so fun times. Yeah. So the, the way they had to do it is like camera teams had to get tested. They had to hire their, oh yeah, they had to hire their own doctor, their own COVID people there to do the tests on set, you know, camera team twice a week. And Anybody going in had to get COVID tests every Monday. It was kind of crazy. So the opportunities for photography were just like nil. Most of the work that I was doing on that was remote digital compositing. So they were sending me like cell phone images from the actors and saying, hey, or comp their faces into this and that. And uh, ideally you'd do the gallery and then you'd have your assets to be able to build it with. Um, but I wasn't able to do that. So finally mm. we had to kind of, I got pulled in and I was, uh, and we were kind of trying to figure out how to do some of these, uh, uh, some of these photos that were going to appear in scene. Cause there was mm. like, I had to pick up a picture that they were going to cut to. And uh, you know, we were supposed to have the actors in, but we couldn't do it. And uh, so there was me, the art director and uh, uh, the director, Johan Roberts, and they were trying to figure out how we we're going to kind of do this. And they said, okay, well, we just need this one shot of, of uh, the one actor who happened to be Robbie at the time. And he said, okay, he's here right now, grab him. And then we brought <laughs> me in the hallway. I didn't even have my, 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 my whole setup. We basically had my ex, my Fujifilm X Pro 2 in hand that I usually kind of walk around camera. And they said, okay, grab him, grab me. We go there, we're all masked <laughs> up. And they sit him there and against the wall and boom, that's that's the shot. I had like, oh, you know, man. six different ones and that was it. They're like, cool. All right. Your job's done. You can go home now. So oh. like I had like probably like, you know, about a minute uh, to really kind of capture the photos. So there's like pretty high pressure. And it's just yeah. to say like how, how, how uh, complicated it, it's really made a lot of COVID's made a lot of, a lot of our lives and our shoots and, and uh, yeah, but that was pretty, uh, that's, that, that is, that is <laughs> definitely working under the pressure. Uh, well, it really speaks to your ability to 
uh, to do this job, right? To do the work that you need to do really quickly. You know, there's photographers that need to set up for hours at a time. And then there's, you know, sometimes it, you, you can just, you know, pick up a camera and still do a good job under pressure. So I think that speaks to the quality and, and, and kind of the seniority of your work. Uh, let's touch on COVID because I think that's kind of a good, really good segue. You know, it's March, 2021. We've now been living in the COVID world for longer than most of us probably wanted to or want to. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm saying most. Uh, maybe there's some people that enjoy this. Um, <laughs> COVID has impacted all of our personal lives, right? And I don't, you know, I don't think we have to get into how it impacted our personal lives because um, I'm sure we hear enough about that. But I'd love to hear a little bit about how it has impacted your professional life. Uh, has, you know, it sounds like work potentially kind of dried up. Um, how have you filled the time, or ha- and have you found potentially other uh, ways to supplement the income that you were uh, gaining through photography during COVID? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was, uh, well, like last year it was pretty, it was, was pretty difficult just because, you know, we kind of got, I kind of got hammered in multiple ways where, you know, not only was uh, I affected by being, being forced Mm -hmm. close, you know, my daughter having, you know, the the schools being closed and you have to be at stay at home dad type thing with the wife working and all this stuff. So, uh, for the summertime, like how are you supposed to schedule anything? So for the most, most of the time it was just, uh, you know, I, I was lucky enough that I had a few commercial clients like architecture firms that I was able to kind of go and do some interior photos and that. So mm-hmm. there was a few kind of side hustle gigs that were, that were, uh, that were needed to kind of maintain, uh, uh, maintain something over time. But, um, yeah, apart from that, it, you know, like if it wasn't for my wife and her, her job, it, I just kind of focused on my family and just focused on just uh, keeping busy in that regard. Yeah. Um, but being working on, uh, working on these feature films too, like we were lucky that we had, uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, funding for this feature film that's going to carry us through without that. I mean, it would have been pretty dire. And if I didn't have a, you know, a, you know, a significant, you know, a wife who had a full-time mm-hmm. job, it would have been pretty, pretty dire, you know? Yeah. So, um, so thankfully I'm hoping that, you know, all this stuff is really just a really bad couple years. And I'm yeah. still saying couple years because I'm preparing for this to be another, at least by the time till next year, until things normalize, yeah. so basically kind of doing whatever you can to just, uh, you know, keep your sanity and, you know, you know, have things trickle in as you can and just kind of keep, keep busy, yeah. but it really makes it hard. Like I'm, th- I'm right now we're under lockdown and, uh, my daughter's upstairs in class in grade <laughs> one. So I'm thinking about her and, and, uh, and uh, her experience and all this for her, this is all kind of normal, but for me, it kind of racks my brain in the sense yeah. that she has never really known a, a normal school, uh, what normal school is like she finished in, in, she was not even done kindergarten before all this happened. Yeah. Everything got shut down, went into the summer. Now she's in grade one. And yeah. even that was like in and out of school, virtual learning. So she never even had like a proper thing. So that, yeah. that sort of thing has been really difficult. And I think a lot of people will probably share in that. So yeah, yeah no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have. Sorry, a, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a three and a half years old as well, and, and kind of same story. We we kind of held him back from uh, junior kindergarten. We, we left him in daycare just just because daycares are closed less often here in Toronto, at least the daycare yeah. that we're in, and so that that allows us to, it's you know, spend a little bit more time on on the work that we're doing. But yeah, um, I, you know, I'm glad that you're, I'm glad that you're trying to figure you know figuring this out during this time. It's 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 definitely the. <laughs> You know, it's it's kind of impossible to imagine that we would have been here, right? So, um, glad you're 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 making it work. Um, how did you? Is there anything you're doing on your photography or cinematography practice to make sure that you're, you know, you're always you're not gonna lose the touch, you know, something, you know, you're yeah. not gonna lose touch with what you're doing, so that when you come back, you're like, oh, you know, my work now looks worse than it did before. <laughs> is, there any, is there anything that you're doing specifically? I did notice that you're playing with VFX a little bit. Uh, anything there? Yeah, no, no, I'm still doing like, I'm still able to do my photography and stuff. Actually, I've been focusing more a lot on personal work. So I mm. spend, uh, I spend a lot of time outdoors now and I go for a lot, a lot of walks with my daughter and I do a lot of personal work, but I, I still do headshots and that for people. It's just a matter of scheduling things between lockdowns, mm. um, you know, so, and doing a lot of stuff virtually now, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, um, one, actually one of the, one of the things that I have been spending a little bit of time on is actually going through my archives. Cause I have so much stuff that I've never had an opportunity to go through a post and now I actually do. So mm. I'm spending that time there and I'm actually, uh, I'm going to be making a book with just my portraits. Um, mm. at the suggestion of, uh, one of my former colleagues at the university, they kept bugging me and said, make a, make a book, make a book. You got to put all your, your stuff in a book. And I figure, well, now's the opportunity that I can kind of put this together. And hopefully mm. by the end, I'll have something to draft and, uh, and maybe put some for sale, but you know, 
like for me, for me, uh, I don't have any really any other hobbies, you know, photography and cinematography is my hobby. So what I'm not doing here, uh, you know, I'm constantly just reading, watching, you know, YouTube videos and uh, mostly reading books and stuff. But I find just going out and actually practicing what I do in between the last lockdowns. Um, you know, I actually shot uh, an entire short film for, uh, for a new director, uh, uh, Al Moran called walks and uh, we actually just had to do the festival circuit. And I think out of, uh, mm. out of 12 festivals, it was a selection. I think 10 of them and it was a finalist at two of them. So, you know, there's all these little mm. things that you can do in between. Right. And uh, that was a fun little project because we were able to actually uh, test out a small production over two days in between lockdowns, still adhering to all the health and safety measures. So we were able to not only kind of get everybody together as our crew and practice it, but also practice it, doing it safely and, and seeing how this works. So that when we do get to like a large sale project, you know, later on this year, we'll, we'll already have gone through everything and have everything, uh, our whole kind of workflow uh, uh, set up. Got it. Um, and, you know, you know, when we get out of COVID, hopefully everything, things go back to normal, quote unquote, <laughs> whatever that looks like, right? Um, what do you foresee yourself uh, in the future? Meaning when you go back into photography, cinematography, like who are you, who are you five, 10 years from now? Do you have a goal for yourself? Uh, yeah, I think the only thing is like, I'm just, I just, for my, my five-year goal is basically just to keep doing what I'm doing and then just basically getting, you know, you know, more projects, you know, getting, getting new, new, better projects and just continuing on. And uh, just having fun doing it. So, got it. And if you could give advice to other photographers that would want to follow in your footsteps, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Well, don't, I mean, don't, I, don't come after my job, obviously. <laughs> <That's yeah. fine. laughs> well, there's a lot of stuff I find. Uh, the one good thing is that uh, I remember having conversations with photographers before that were really wor worried about competition. And I feel like there's a lot of work out there. Mm. And it's, it's really easy to kind of see, well, look at what they have, look what they have. But you know what? I think everybody gets their own version of whatever their thing is. Mm. You know, if you're out there, you're good and you work hard. Uh, people will recognize that and you will get opportunities. It may not be the same opportunity is as as uh, as the other people you see but everybody gets their own cool interesting opportunities and i see that happen every day and uh, that's why i say it's like you know don't worry too much about what everybody else is doing what everybody else is is, is saying you worry about what you like what you enjoy what challenges you and if and i even even when i was telling all my students and my pas i said at the end of the day is that if you are happy with what the work you're doing if you had a good day's work and you know you work your hardest and you know and you have that work ethic and you're and you're you're confident in yourself work will come, you know, mm -hmm. it will just be invariable that people will want to hire you no matter what you're doing. It's like, and this is one thing I used to always tell my students kind of, uh, and my PAs, uh, I'd say, you know what, if I task you to go clean the toilet and you do a crappy job cleaning that toilet, don't expect a better job. But if, you, if I task you to clean that toilet and it's the most polished, well cleaned toilet that I've ever seen in my life, well, I'm not going to make you clean toilets. I'm going to say, well, this person has to be doing other stuff because they do a good job, right? You know, so you got to scale it. And people kind of forget about that, but always do a good job, no matter how menial you think it is, because people are always watching and they take mm. stock in it. They really do. Mm. That's, that's good advice. Where can our listeners find you? Online. Well, I mean, the best place is probably uh, on uh, on my website. You know, JerryKingsley.com is the uh, is the best place. Um, but you can find me on there too. It's uh, Jerry at work. It's G E R Y A T W R K. Thank yeah. you, Jerry, for joining us today. I really had a pleasure talking to you, getting to know you. Loved everything that you shared with us. Uh, all of us at Format wish you all the best of luck, and for now and in the future. And uh, hopefully, we'll speak again. All right. Thanks, Lucas. Cheers. Thanks for joining me on the photographer's journey. Join me next time at format.com slash podcast for another photographer conversation as we learn more about how other professional photographers build their business. To support this podcast, don't forget to sign up for a free account at format.com. Podcast listeners get 20% off on the first year at Format with a promo code JOURNEY when you upgrade your plan. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and be sure to share it with your network. From all of us at Format, thank you. And remember, we're here to help you succeed. And I look forward to one day sitting down with you and learning how you've succeeded in your photography business. Until next time, thanks.